In this video, we'll talk about power series, defining what these objects are and giving some idea of what we can do with these objects. So now we're going to start talking about power series. And power series are a very important tool in a lot of physical applications, as well as various ideas beyond that. Um, if you take differential equations, there are techniques in there called solving ODEs by power series. That has its own technique, its own sort of thing that's all fundamentally based around this idea of a power series. And there are many functions, like Bessel functions being the main example that I know of, that are useful across a lot of electromagnetic type of objects and type of equations. This is how you describe those solutions, and they can only be written as power series. We have no actual form for them beyond that of a power series. So being able to understand these power series and know how to do things with them is really important for being able to deal with these applications in the future. What is a power series? A power series is an infinite series of the following form. It's f of x, leave that alone and I'll talk about what fx means later, is the sum from 0 to infinity of some sequence a n times x minus c to the power n. So you can think of this n as a sequence of coefficients. And c here is the center of the power series. Basically, the way you want to think about these is they are infinite degree polynomials. They're polynomials where you just don't stop writing powers of n, right? If you have a fifth order polynomial, you have a constant term, degree 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then you stop. For a power series, you never stop. You just keep writing higher and higher and higher powers of x, and that gives you a power series that's an infinite degree polynomial. And sort of make that more clear, if the power series is centered at 0, then my series just looks like sum n from 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. It is directly a polynomial. So you can have these sort of in your head as sort of the base case for how to think about these things, but they are basically just polynomials, but they're infinitely long polynomials. And the fact that they are infinitely long causes issues that you can probably think about because we just spent a while talking about series and their convergence. We'll deal with convergence of these a little bit later. First thing I want to discuss is operations on power series. So at this point, we sort of want to think of these as just formal objects. We don't know what they do. We can just write this expression that's basically an infinitely long polynomial, and we want to do things with it. So they are basically polynomials, and we can more or less treat them as such as long as we're careful at every step of the process. So if I have two power series at zero that I can write this way, then I can add power series. So I can add f of x to g of x. Or effectively, I can add the sum of a n x to the n plus the sum of b n x to the n. And the main thing I want to do here is I want to write this as another power series. That's always our goal is write this as a new power series, which means I want to group all the terms by their power of x because that's the determining factor of the power series, right? The power series is some coefficients times x to the n, or times x minus c to the n. If I want to add them together, I have to write it in terms of stuff times x to the n. Here this is pretty easy, because I can see that if I want to do that, I can just add the a n x to the n term to the b n x to the n term to get a n plus b n times x to the n. That's how you add power to the same way you normally add series. You can subtract them too, you get the same sort of result from subtracting them. But there's one other operation that we want to talk about some more time on the power series, and that's multiplying them. I want to think what's going to happen if I multiply these together. And again, we should get a power series for our answers. We have to figure out how we're going to write this in a way to get a power series at the end. So to do that, let's start by just writing out the first couple terms from each thing and seeing how we multiply those, right? These are polynomials. We can think about foiling polynomials and see what happens. I can rewrite this here as, say, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, and so on, times b0 plus b1x plus b2x squared, and so on. Now, our goal is to get this as a power series. So what I want to do is figure out how to get each power of x and use that to determine what I get for my series. So, for instance, how do I get an x to the 0 term? Well, the only way I get x to the 0 is by pairing the 0 with the 0 here, 
give me no powers of x in the answer, this should be a0 times b0 for this one. How do we get x to the 1? Well, there are two ways to get x to the 1. I either pair this x to the 1 with this x to the 0, or I pair this x to the 1 with this x to the 0. So the coefficient here is going to be a0, b1 plus a1, b0. And you can keep going with this. For x squared, there's going to be three ways to make it happen. I can either pair a0 with b2 to give me a 0 and a 2 to give me a squared. I can pair a1 with b1, or I can pair a2 with b0. And this continues. The pattern you might see here is the fact that to get to x to the k, I need to add up products of all pairs of numbers that add to k. How do I get x to the 0? Well, the only way I can add two non-negative numbers together to get 0 is by adding 0 plus 0. So I do that and I get my 0 coefficient. How do I get 2? Well, there's three ways I can add two non-negative numbers together to get 2. I either do 0 plus 2, I do 1 plus 1, or I do 2 plus 0. And that gives me my three coefficients that I have there. So if you want to have an actual formula for this, you can. It's sort of tricky to figure out. You're better off just either remembering this or trying to expand things out and do it that way. But if I want to multiply power series together, I get the following formula. There is my x to the n term. And how do I get n? Well, I add up all the different ways to add to n. I add up from k equals 0 to n. So I start a0 and go up to a n. And I add, multiply that a by the opposite that I need to add up to n. And that'll give my formula for the product of these power series. You're better off being able to say, okay, if I know the first three terms, can I figure out the first three terms of the product? That's a more easier problem to figure out than this one, but the idea is going to lead you to this formula here as well. That's the basic idea of power series, what they are, and how they behave. The one issue we have not yet dealt with is that of convergence, and that'll happen in the next video where we start dealing with when do these things converge and how do I know when they converge, and what information can that tell me about the series itself as a whole.